What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Rant and Review Pro Wrestling. It's been a while since I've been on camera. Uh, but we are covering today and giving you an update on what's going on over in the land of the rising sun with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, we've got a lot of shows that have been going on over the past week, and we got some big ones coming up this weekend. So we want to catch you guys up, especially some of you guys who haven't been keeping up with New Japan as much as to what's going on over there in NJPW. But before we get to that, remember... As always here on the Rant and Review Pro Wrestling and my other channels, Entertainment, Wrestling with Finance, and the Gaming Channel, which we'll be doing a Let's Play of Metroid on the Gaming Channel this week, I want to remind you guys that you can get some free goodies down in the description box below. You can get yourself some free crypto, some free stocks from Weeble and Robinhood, and of course you can get 60,000 free points from the Chase Sapphire Preferred or the Chase Sapphire Reserves card if you're a big baller. So check that out down in the description box below. Sign up for some of those things if you find that they will be helpful to you. And now let's talk about New Japan and what's been going on for the last couple weeks. So they had the Sendai show. Now we're, we're in the Golden Series show. This is a throwback tour to a tour that they used to have a long time ago in New Japan. So they brought it back for the 50th year anniversary. And normally we'd be around the anniversary show, but that's already kind of passed. But we're now heading in the New Beginning show, but we're now heading into the Golden Series. And one of the big spots on here, which was actually surprising, is that Master Wato would be challenging the El Desperado for the IWGP Junior Championship. But also on this night, we had some other rather interesting things going on. There was a match between the Great Okan and Satoshi Kojima, which at this point, and, and you've noticed this as they, they don't have a lot of the foreign talent anymore. They've been relying on a lot of the older talent to kind of come up and fill in some of these spots. And they're actually doing more singles matches as opposed to just having cards full of nothing but multi-man tag matches. They still have a lot of multi-man tag matches, but we're getting a lot more singles matches here. And this Okan Kojima match was one of them. Okan also took on Togi Makabe uh, during this series as well. Okan got the win over both of those third generation, well, Makabe's not really third generation, but he got the win over a lot of these older wrestlers. But Kojima really impressed me. Kojima's been impressing me for the last year. I mean, the guy is up there in age. He does eat a lot of bread, but he can still go in the ring. It was an impressive outing, more so by him than I was the Great Okan. Great Okan still has not really completely won me over yet, but they're trying to get him there. Gato had a match, speaking of older wrestlers, against Tiger Mask. And of course, Tiger Mask is involved with Robbie Eagles in his whole ongoing feud and rivalry with Bullet Club and some other people, as we would find out, for the junior tag titles. But since Taiji Ishimori, I think he was diagnosed with COVID or he had a, the temperature or something like that. He There was a COVID scare with Ishimori. Gato had to fill in the spot <laughs> against Tiger Mask. And yeah, that didn't go so well for Gato. There is one point in this match where they did something I absolutely thought was funny as hell. Is that they're outside the ring and Gato's been cheating on the whole match as of course he is wont to do. And the referee uh, is looking at them outside the ring. He's like, what's going on? So Tiger Mask gets this belt that Gato was going to whoop him with. And he's holding the belt and Gato's like, ho ho. And he goes to the referee and goes, referee, he's going to hit me with a belt. Referee, what's going on? So the ref... The ref, because he's had so enough of Gato and Bullet Club and the House of Torture's BS, the ref actually goes, oh wait, there's something in my eye, there's something in my eye, and he turns around, and Tiger Mask starts whooping the crap out of Gato with the belt. That was a cool spot, that was a cool comedy spot, I did enjoy that. But of course, Tiger Mask won the match, it's Gato, so you know, you won the match. Even though it was a fairly competitive match at some point, Gato's showing he's still got some wrestling chops at his age same thing with tiger mask so that was enjoyable but the big thing here is in the main event we had master wato getting his first really big this is probably the biggest match of master wato's career so far taking on el desperado who's who is I, you know people say hiromu's the ace of the junior division i have to say this year el desperado was the ace of the junior division right now and they had a decent match uh wato still got to work on some stuff uh, to really get over with us, but this was another step in the right direction. I'm, I'm kind of saying that Master Wato is the new Yoshihashi of New Japan. Now that Yoshihashi actually, you know, you feel like he's legit now. It took a long time to get there. I think the same thing is kind of true here with Master Wato. It might take Master Wato as long as it took Yoshihashi to get to the point where people were like, 
Come on, man, why this guy? We then headed to the Edeon Arena in Osaka, and a place that I actually really am looking forward to finally getting to travel to again once the travel restrictions are up. Uh, but they had a great show here, and I want to note one thing that in Sendai and Osaka, the crowds are getting a little bit thicker in the New Japan shows. I don't know if that's because they're letting more people in or whatever's going on, or there's kind of a renewed interest in New Japan and Japan right now, or because if you look at the statistics, the you know the pandemic is kind of worse there than it's ever been, but there seems to be a relaxing of restrictions. They're even talking about letting foreigners come back in for a limited basis pretty soon. So maybe we're getting out of this, but the crowd, the crowd in Osaka, I think they forgot about the voice protocols in the main event and the semi-main event matches on this night. They didn't care. They just started ooing and eyeing as this show progressed. And this was a really good crowd given the circumstances. One of the things they had on this card, as I mentioned before, was this whole junior heavyweight championship thing. So we did get Tiger Mask, but Tiger Mask took on El Fantasmo on this show. And El Fantasmo being his usual dirty, nasty self. I still think that guy's a future star. They just, they, they, there's like a couple old pieces missing. That guy's going to be a mega star, but that's just my opinion. But they had a pretty good outing here, but it ended with a disqualification. Taiji Ishimori showing up now that he was healthy again. And he wound up having, a, I, I believe it was kind of an impromptu match with Robbie Eagles. They went a little over 10 minutes, but man, they really put everything into this little short match that they had. And Robbie Eagles looking fantastic. Finally getting the win over Taiji Ishimori. Now remember, Eagles and Ishimori a couple years ago were part of Bullet Club. They were the junior tag team for Bullet Club. Des El Fantasmo came in, shook that around. Robbie Eagles kind of got, kind of left Bullet Club, and now he, him and Tiger Mask, they're kind of formed this kind of ultra face tag team who are still the IWGP Junior Tag Team Champions. So after these series of single matches, things then got a little bit more interesting. Now I think they call them Team 609 or whatever it is, but uh, Ryusuke Taguchi and Master Wado come down after the, these single matches, and they go, hey, wait a minute, you know, it's going to be the 69th IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, Tag Team Champions. And you know, Taguchi likes the number 69. So Taguchi wants in on this match coming up this coming weekend uh, for New Japan. And then that wasn't enough. Then we get Desperado and Kenamaro coming out from Suzuki-Goon. They get in the ring. And this is when the crowd really started to start murmuring. They stopped the clapping stuff and they started ooing and gasping because Eagles goes, okay, all four, look, we took on two teams at Wrestle Kingdom. We'll take on all three of you and do a four-way. And the crowd was like, oh yeah. Because actually thinking about that, the, the contrast of Tiger Mask and Robbie Eagles, Ishimori and El Fantasmo. We also got Taguchi who's solid in the ring and then Wato who's on the come up. And you also have El Desperado and Kenamaro who are solid. This could be an amazing Fatal 4-Way Junior Tag Team match for the championships. I can't wait to see this. It's kind of a throwback to the way the junior title scene was a couple years ago in New Japan. So they did a good job setting this up and the crowd really seemed to be into it. Then something, a miracle happened. We had the House of Torture, Evil, defending the Never Open Weight Championship against former champion Tomohiro Ishii. Uh, a lot of people were hoping that Ishii would get his comeuppance here. This was a lumberjack match. Basically, you had Chaos on Ishii's side and the House of Torture on Evil's side. And they early started off with all the House of Tor Torture nonsense. But that did get eliminated after a while. This match went about 20 minutes. And about halfway through the match, pretty much all the Chaos guys and all the House of Torture guys kind of canceled each other out. And they all got laid out outside the ring. And then it really did come down to Evil versus Ishii. And we got to see, after all this time, a glimmer of the evil we used to know, the evil that we used to like, who could wrestle hard and wrestle strong style. And him and, he, boy, him and Ishii were clobbering the crap out of each other in this match at some points, especially near the end. It was a great conclusion to this match. And surprise, surprise, after a beautiful series of reversals, evil actually hit the everything is evil and got the pin on Tomohiro Ishii clean. Well, kind of clean because there was a lot of interference earlier in the match, but clean as far as the pin was concerned. No hooking of the tights, nobody hitting Ishii in the head or anything like that. He he won with everything is evil and retained that never open weight championship. So the House of Torture stood tall. Chaos looked a little bit dejected coming out of this match, but you know, they've got a never open six man tag match coming later in the tour, which I think they're going to get their comeuppance in. But right here, evil 
showing us some of the stuff that I've been saying and a lot of people have been saying we want to see evil. Yeah, you can do the House of Torture stuff every once in a while, but we do want to see evil wrestle the way we know he can wrestle. And we got some of that in this match, so that was pretty cool. As far as overarching stuff, in the main event, we had Tetsuya and Naito teaming up with Sonata. Both of them, of course, members of Los Ingobernables de Japón, taking on the Golden Aces of Kazuchika Okada. Well, they're not the Golden Aces. They should be the Golden Aces. But just the dream team, I guess I should say. Golden Aces is a different team, Perry. Hiroshi Tanahashi and Kazuchika Okada, the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, as a tag team, the dream team, the mega powers of modern-day New Japan, uh, taking on LIJ. And this was a fantastic tag match. It went, it went a little bit too long, but I understand it's a main event match. They usually do that. Uh, the thing to highlight in this match, though, is Sonata got knocked out of the ring at one point, and then it winds up being Naito and Tanahashi. So Naito's lining up Tanahashi for a Destino. It got botched a little bit, so we got everybody runs in the ring. But the ultimate thing that happened is Okada went for the Rainmaker on Naito. Naito ducked underneath it, hit the Destino, took out Okada, and then hit the Valencia and Destino on Tanahashi and pinned Tanahashi. So essentially Naito took out both of the mega powers of New Japan and by himself because Sonata was laying on the floor and Naito just like Destino, Destino, done, we win, great. And he won the tag match and then did the roll call at the end of the match. There is some murmurings about there possibly being some issues with Sonata. Sonata is challenging to Hiroshi Tanahashi in the main event on this coming Saturday show in the New Year Golden Series. Um, I'm very curious. That's a 50-50 one for me. I can't see whether or not Sonata or Tanahashi is going to win that match for the U.S. title. I still think we're all kind of under agreement that Okada is going to retain against Naito coming up this coming Sunday, but we're going to have to wait to see on that. There's, they could do something here. The thing, though, is New Japan hasn't really gone on some of these risks lately that they used to go on a couple years ago, so they try to keep things kind of tame, but I think... And we all agree it's time for them to shake stuff up a little bit. I don't want to see Naito beating Okada because I don't want that championship getting traded around too much. But the Tanahashi Sonata match intrigues me a little bit more, and I really want to see where that is. Tanahashi looking like he's losing a step too, a little bit. He might be uh he might be heading up with the third generation guys pretty soon if he keeps botching as much as he is. And I hate to say that because it's Tanahashi, but he wasn't looking good in this tag match on this night against Sonata and Naito. Some other little notes here on the show, of course, uh, Minoru Suzuki and Toriyano are continuing this dog cage thing, and they keep using it every single one. Now, there's a vote whether or not it's going to be a hand handcuff match coming up for the King of Pro Wrestling trophy, or it's going to be a put your opponent in a dog cage match. What well, Either one is going to be funny. I, they're probably going to combine both of them in some way, shape, or form. But Minoru Suzuki has been having a lot more fun, I noticed, in New Japan over the last month during this tour, beating up people, handcuffing the young lions, throwing Yano in a cage, throwing Taguchi in a cage, kicking people left and right. Minoru Suzuki is just as happy as a <laughs> he's happy as he can be by being able to go back to being Minoru Suzuki in New Japan and just beating the crap out of everybody. And Yano is having a great time frustrating the hell out of Suzuki. Again, this pairing, this never-ending feud between the two of them is always entertaining. Yes, it can be hokey and a little bit too much on the comedy side, but I think we have enough solid stuff going on on the rest of the card now that it doesn't overwhelm everything for me right now. So that's the other stuff going up on the card. And again, coming up, the uh, conclusion of this tour will be coming up this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. You can go on njpwworld.com and subscribe for, you know, around nine bucks for the month just to check out some of these shows. Some pretty good matches lined up, and I'm expecting a lot out of Naito and uh, Okada, of course, Sonata and Tanahashi, and I think the kennel match with, or with the handcuff match, whatever one it winds up being between Minoru Suzuki and Toriyano should be quite entertaining, and this four-way junior tag team championship match is probably going to be crazy, batshit crazy insane. So that's what's going on with New Japan these days, as far as me catching up on the New Year Golden Series, but I want to know what you guys think about this. Let your voice be heard in the comment box below. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell. And let other people know about this on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you talk about pro wrestling and New Japan. Until next time, I'll see you guys here for more news, rumors, and commentary on the Rant and Review Pro Wrestling. Have a good day.